California is a unique place. It's the third largest state in the U.S. It's home to over 40 million people and has the fifth largest economy in the world. When most people think of California, they think of crowded beaches, long commutes, bustling cities full of tech innovation, and a work week that never ends. But California offers so much more. I'm a fourth generation Californian who's been a part of a 100 year old family owned candy business located on the central coast of California. But that is just business. My real love is the outdoors. I've been hunting, fishing, and foraging for as long as I can remember. And being of Italian descent, food is always top of mind. Join me as I share with you a glimpse into a whole different side of this great state. My name is Joe Marini, and this is my California. I met Angelo about six years ago at Treasure Island. He had harvested a wild pig and had a party. And I got invited through some friends. And we kind of hit it off and talked about foraging and hunting and fishing. And that day we decided that we needed to plan a trip together. And so that fall we spent a few days afield hunting and gathering and just kind of hit off a friendship. From that day forth, we've always kind of planned a few adventures every year. Today we're heading up to San Francisco, the heart of California's Bay Area. We are meeting up with an old friend of mine, Angelo Garo, who's going to show us how to make fennel cakes. When you arrive at his forge, hidden at the end of a nondescript alley, it's hard to anticipate what you're about to experience. Angelo, are you home? He always greets everyone with a warm smile, especially when he knows he'll be cooking and hosting. Good, how are you? Good, 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 good. 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 Yeah, you're in time. We're in time. Wow, that, you, were you born in Switzerland? <laughs> He's also quite a jokester and will keep you on your toes any chance he gets. When you step inside his forge and really take a minute to look around, you realize you're surrounded by piles and piles, some of the most random items. Most of it is from Angelo's previous lives. Old pictures, random artwork, animal skulls and bones, random items everywhere, hints of unfinished ideas and projects. And of course, an old stack of fedoras that if they could talk would probably tell their own stories. As you venture in deeper, you really start to realize how magical a place the forge really is. Because it's not just a forge. It's where Angelo works his magic with food and drink. He's amazing. He cures his own meats, he makes his own wine, and at a moment's notice, he'll whip up a high-end restaurant-grade appetizer for anyone to enjoy. His kitchen has personality all its own. From his old-style cookware to the funky decor. To the in-house security guard, Don Corleone. So after Angelo whipped us up some fresh cappuccinos, we get on the road and begin our hunt for wild fennel. Wild fennel is one of the most prolific plants that can be found all over California. It's similar to your garden variety fennel, looking nearly identical, but with one big difference. There's not really a bulb. So these fennel cakes are pretty famous then. Oh yeah, they are. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I actually, I introduced, they're Sicilian, right. but I introduced it to the Bay Area. Nobody was doing that. Wild fennel cakes are super easy to make and delicious. And unlike most fennel recipes, it calls specifically for the fronds and stalks of the plant. Fennel is, the prime time is right now in the spring. Yeah. And do we have to run or catch them? How do we have a net? <laughs> oh, you try to be yeah. funny. Yeah. Careful, <laughs> you can't be funny on camera. At first I thought we were headed out of San Francisco towards some open meadow or field in the boonies somewhere. But Angelo said wild fennel grows right here in the heart of San Francisco, on the side of the road. Tucked in between some houses and a freeway, I still wasn't sure where we were going, but lo and behold, 
As we stepped off the sidewalk, I realized we were surrounded by wild fennel. I had no idea this was even here. When we chop, we go from the, the end here, fold some of this in, chop it with it, and then we discard about this much, you know. So a little bit of fiber, it helps to bind when you fry the fennel cake with uh, eggs, parmesan, garlic, and breadcrumb. Angelo showed us how to identify fennel amongst all the surrounding foliage. How to pick the good stuff? And how to get it back to the car without damaging it. Put it in the bag the same direction. Same direction. Now it's going to go and put it in the bag, but the same direction. <laughs> now with bags full of fennel, it was time to head back and start prepping for the cakes. So here we are, we're back at the truck. We've got our load of fennel we just picked. As you can see in the field, we, we picked just the top quarter of the fennel, trying to get two pieces. This part right here is the fibrous part, which will be cut with the stock in to go into the fennel cake. So when we get back to the forge, we'll chop this part up, clean it, wash it, and then make it, mix it with Parmesan cheese and breadcrumbs to make a fennel cake. Come along, it's gonna be delicious. Once we arrived back at the forge, it was time to get to work. Usually I discard a little bit because it's easier to wash because this part we're gonna discard it anyway. We chopped and chopped and chopped. We didn't blanch this ahead of time. Yeah, we have to. First we would blanch it. Oh, before we chop it? No. Are you gonna blanch now. it after? Now. Oh, oh. we blanch it. Water, water, we blanch all the fennel. But do you, do you use a certain salt? A sea salt. Oh, okay. So now, here's how much salt I put, look. Oh, quite a bit, a good quite handful. A good handful, and a little bit. And a little bit. <laughs> we blanched, then we let it cool down for a bit. Oh, look, look how dry it is, guys. You wanna see? See? Oh, nice. It's drying nicely. Yeah, still hot, but it's nice and dry, you see? And it's very important after you cook to, to spread it out. Wait a little bit longer to cool because I don't want the eggs to cook, scramble. Cook, scramble. So another 10 minutes, we mix it and fry. After the fennel cooled, it was time to prepare the fennel cakes. Fresh fennel, homemade breadcrumbs, Salt and pepper, Parmigiano, crushed red pepper, eggs, and then we hand mix. Let me, let me show you. Very important how you make this. You, know, you go like this, you know. You have to compact. See that? Turn, turn, right. turn, compact, and then that's it. You see, you should have, have it taste right. You shouldn't have a thin, thin area at the edge. Yo, you don't listen. I'm not listening. Okay. You, I just can't hear you. You're not talking loud enough. You right. should make a round okay. and then All right. slightly press it. Okay, but now I'm telling you about a fennel cake, though. What you I know, thought. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? You asked me what I thought about the fennel cake. Oh yeah. I could see where this could go wrong. And it could go wrong, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's important. It doesn't matter, it's better to put it directly in the pan. You know what I mean? Put it directly into the pan. It wasn't long before fennel cakes were ready to eat. And man, I tell you what, it was hard to describe the flavor of these things with words. With a kind of a, in the back of the palate, it's kind of a sweetness that just kind of melts. That, that, yeah, you'd almost think it's got meat in it, but it doesn't. And do you think, just a few hours earlier, we were picking this stuff on the side of the road in a big city. B, 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 to round out the meal, Angelo had already made pasta ready to boil and serve. And finally, the moment we were all waiting for, it was time for lunch. As we started getting seated around the table, it was surreal. 
Here we are, eating what could easily be a Michelin-rated meal, served to us by the chef personally on an old, beat-up folding table. All of this encompassed in an old forge. To be honest, it was perfect in every way.